There are several definitions for diarrhea. The most scientific approach is a stool weight over 300 grams or stool volume over 300 milliliters in a 24-hour period. The more practical definition is a stool frequency over three times per day with a loose stool consistency. There are several approaches to categorizing chronic diarrhea. Physiological, osmotic versus secretory, anatomical, small bowel versus large bowel. However, my preference is to look at this problem in terms of the four most common causes, lactose intolerance, celiac disease, inflammatory bowel disease, and by default, irritable bowel syndrome. Therefore, a very practical approach to this problem is as follows. First, exclude chronic infections, most notably Giardia in campers, well water drinkers, and Clostridium difficile with antibiotics, and medications, especially new ones, metformin being a good example. Second, while formal laboratory tests do exist for lactose intolerance, one way to exclude it is a dairy-free trial for 14 days. Next, if the patient is still symptomatic, then consider celiac disease by sending a tissue transglutaminase level and or the gold standard test, a gastroscopy with duodenal biopsy. Inflammatory bowel disease is next to be excluded. This requires a history of prototypical symptoms for ulcerative colitis bloody diarrhea, for Crohn's right lower quadrant pain, laboratory work such as findings of anemia, low albumin, elevated C-reactive protein, and finally, if it's still considered, a colonoscopy with a view of the terminal ileum. Having excluded the above, most patients, especially without warning symptoms such as bleeding or weight loss, will have diarrhea predominant irritable bowel syndrome, an entity which may also be accompanied by bloating, abdominal pain relieved by defecation, constipation, and mucus in the stools. One caveat to the above approach, in older patients, consideration must be given to colon cancer, especially with iron deficiency anemia, and microscopic colitis, especially with use of NSAIDs.